Distance can be a major barrier to accessing quality healthcare on time. That's where Angel Flight East comes in. Welcome to Takeoff Talk with Angel Flight East, a nonprofit dedicated to providing free flights for children and adults who need medical treatment far from home. We don't know how many people forego medical care because they don't have accessible transportation. And that's what this podcast is here to change. Join passionate AFE staff members Jess Ames and Maddie Beck as they share real-life stories from people who have used AFE services to get the care they need when they need it. Welcome back to another episode of Takeoff Talk. And today we have a special guest, volunteer pilot, Jeremy, is it Bennington? Or Barrington? Bennington. Bennington. Okay, perfect. So Jeremy, how long have you been flying with Angel Flight E? So about four or five years. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Awesome. How'd you hear about us? When I started flying, which was about 15 years ago, um, I talked to the flight school. I said, you know, are there ways to volunteer? Because I I had obviously done it a little bit later in life in my, my 30s and had always been passionate about aviation, never had the time or money, but decided to pull the trigger anyway and wanted to find a way to, to share. Um, and so Young Eagles and uh, charitable flights came up. And uh, one of the gentlemen at in our hangars happened to be flying for Angel Flight. And he kind of shared what he had done. Uh, and I thought that was, that was fantastic. And then I found out, oh, gee, you got to have a lot more experience. So it gave, gave me a couple of years to... Uh, to, to get some experience before I could volunteer. And you have flown Sandra Wright. She was just chatting about you on our recent interview with her. You know, it, it's really interesting as a volunteer pilot, you know, to, to fly these different patients around. And, you know, we only see a glimpse of their journey for you know a couple hours, three, four hours or something at tops of what it, for many of them is, you know, a many year long struggle with whatever um, they're they're dealing with. And for them to be able to share and open up about their journey is just really one of the most uh, rewarding parts of being a volunteer pilot. That time when we're in route and you can either just let them conk out in the back and get some much needed rest or let them share what they're they're going through. In some cases that's, you know, pretty heavy. In some cases, it's pretty light and, and exciting to see how different people deal with this stuff or, you know, um, overcome it. So Sandra was, was, was definitely a great patient to fly around. We actually are doing, um, patient surveys. So just getting to know exactly what patients are going through, because like you said, they tell you their story, but we're not the ones who get to spend an hour and a half, two hours with them going to treatment or really in general. So Mm -hmm. we're just calling them up and being like, Hey, let's talk. And so, so many people that I have talked to personally, we've probably done about like 15, 20, uh, surveys now and everybody has said the pilots are their biggest support group so wow that's amazing to hear yeah Uh, because you know obviously we'd all hope if we were to face some sort of medical uh issue that you know our family and our doctors and all that kind of stuff but to hear that the encouragement that they get from us uh helps in any way is just yeah that's great yeah it's so cool to see like how everybody's hand being in the pot has such a bigger impact than they even know it's my favorite part, I think. Yeah, and and that's I mean, uh, part of volunteering, right? Whether it be as volunteer pilot, like we're talking about, or at a food bank, or whatever it is that each person's called to do, it's exciting to hear that that reward. But it, you know, also trying to be you know very humble and selfless that you know we're not trying to volunteer because it makes us feel better. We're volunteering because we have the time and skills and resources to do it for those that may not be able to. And, and as a pilot, we're a very small group in the nation that have pilot's licenses, let alone the means to rent or own an aircraft. What We all should be volunteering to share that resource and those skills for those that, that need that help. And so you know, to hear that that they're getting more than just uh, the transportation out of it is just uh, icing on the cake. So would you say that that is your why for signing up to fly with Angel Flight? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, the, the the whole reason is, you know, gosh, uh, how lucky are we to 
uh, be pilots, to have resources, to have these airplanes. And of course, we may use them for work. We may use them for fun and family trips and all that kind of stuff. But that's all a little bit self-centered. So you know, <laughs> how do we use those resources uh, with people around us? And to hear the stories in a way that it's impacted the people that I've flown, which is only you know a small amount of the total people that obviously Angel Flight East flies, reinforces the fact that we need more people to be volunteering to help because there's a lot of people in need and uh, they desperately need that. So that that was part of the compelling reason and, it, and it's been reinforced every time I do it. Yeah. And I think that's one of our big hurdles as the outreach team too, is that we always tell people what we do and it's almost too good to be true. Like there are actually people out there with their own airplanes who are going to fly me and they're not going to send me a bill after the fact. And we're like, yes, like we know so many of them. And to share these stories from the pilots directly, I feel like makes such a bigger impact than us going out and telling people about it. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of pilots, right? You know, on the one hand, it's it's expensive to fly, even if you rent or own. You know, you still got to pay for fuel and maintenance of the aircraft and all that and stuff, and your time. But it's it's kind of funny because you sit there and you go, well, you know, that flight's gonna cost me this much of my mind. You know, okay, gosh, how else would you be donating or giving that money away or or using it for yourself? But you really have to change the context because, you know, how many pilots are sitting around the airport going, hey, does anybody want to go get a hamburger today? You know, the $100 hamburger run, right? And so, you know, we're all going to fly anyway, right? And, you know, otherwise put your license in the in the drawer and don't rent or own an airplane. You're, you want to fly. It's part of what you enjoy doing. So why not use that, that enjoyment to serve others? And um, yeah, again, been a lot of fun. That's awesome. And so now we've heard about your flights with Sandra and that you've gotten to know the passengers that you do fly. Would you say that you have a uh, favorite story about any of your flights or a specific passenger that's had the biggest impact on you? There's two um, that, that come to mind. Uh, one was a mom and a, a child who's probably maybe nine or 10 years old. He had um, some pretty severe. Um, disabilities, um, partially genetic, but also partially due to an accident. And so his cognitive abilities were not great. He kind of had cognitive abilities, maybe a six-year-old and some other really substantial physical disabilities. And yet that kid was having the time of his life. You know, he, he would have thought he was in an amusement park. Now, for me as the pilot, it was actually a fairly challenging flight because it was all instrument. It was a bumpy ride. And I had shared that with the mom and ahead of time. So, you know, this is going to be not a, a bad flight, but I want you to know that, you know, there's going to be weather and uh, I'm going to be concentrating on stuff. So are you okay with that? And she, she's like, yeah, you know, we got to get there and that's fine. But, you know, we're going through some bumps and he's throwing his arms up and having a good time. <laughs> and then, I uh, love that. You know, it, it was great. But, it, you know, once that subsided and we had about uh, 45 minutes of clear air and, and I was able to talk with the mom, man. <laughs> you talk about some heavy stuff. Uh, it's inspiring to see a parent who can still have a positive outlook dealing with all of those things. And uh, so that was just really inspiring to see uh, her spirit uh, and, and view on things and being able to help. So that was, you know, that was pretty Im impactful. Um, the other one that comes to mind was uh, one that was just a lot of fun. Uh, it's taken a, uh, not a kid, I was in his 20s, kid in my mind still, uh, <laughs> and his aunt uh, back from treatment back home. Uh, and it was his last flight. He had been cleared by his doctors to be cancer free. Yay. <laughs> it was incredible. Oh. Um, and he was just so excited to finally be free. Uh, and his aunt was exhausted and, and fell asleep in the back of the airplane. But this kid for two hours, was just talking nonstop all the way home, all the things he could do now. You know, he had been diagnosed in high school, lost a lot of high school experiences, like never got to go to prom, never got to do all those kind of things that many of us you know, have great memories of. And is now, you know, in his early 20s, trying to find a job and, and, and had done nurse some nursing school and all these different things because he had been inspired by the doctors and stuff. And just he was so excited that now that he was cancer free, he could go forward with his life. And it's just have that 
that energy and excitement of being being free from the, all of these challenges he had and to see that uh, unbridled enthusiasm for life now, man, <laughs> I walked away from that going, hey, you know, we, we, it was pretty inspiring. We all kind of maybe take for granted getting up every day and going to work and doing the things we do. Uh, and this kid's just got a lease on life. And uh, that was, that was really, really cool. That's incredible. I always say our passengers are so incredibly positive. And despite what they're going to, they're always just so happy and willing to give back. And then I always think like our bad days are in no way in comparison to what a lot of people are going through in this world. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, and, and certainly there are some flights where, you know, you show up, they're drained. They're they're mm-hmm. not excited. They just want to get home or go to wherever they're going for treatment. And, you know, you kind of go through the normal spiel, getting them ready and help them get in the airplane. And, you know, a lot of times finish your safety briefing, tell them, you know, be quiet until we, until I, I let you know we're, we're established in routes. And by then there's in the next thing you you're talking to them because you've shut the engine down and it's time to go. Those are still rewarding in a way because you've offered them not only transportation, but just, just rest. And so every flight's got a different dynamic to it. Um, I haven't had anybody who's been angry or upset. I hear occasionally there's people that are like, Oh, I should just take my airline or whatever. But everybody that I've experienced with um, has really just been very thankful and understanding sometimes because there have been a few flights where we've had to divert. We've had to, you know, cancel. Um, been several of those usually ahead of time, right? Uh, there was one where I had weather uh, and there was just, there's going to be no getting through it. So we just had to land, just kind of worked out. And I said, hey, you know, here's about as far as I'm going to be able to get you. Now, by the way, I had told this guy a couple of days leading up whether I'm going to be good. We can go. If we go, uh, we may have to stop short of getting you there. Uh, is that going to be a problem? Or would you rather just go commercial or rent a car or whatever you're going to do? He's like, no, 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 you, let, let, let's go. And uh, turned out the weather's bad. So we, we, I said, look, here are the different towns that we could go to. And I said, oh, well, I've got family in this one. So it actually wow, what a small world. I think that, I remember like, this you know, flight. Was it George Tenney? Yeah, was it that's a, right. I oh, love, love him. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know. He's so easygoing. He's a great guy, right? You know, so we, we land and it was 35 knots just off the nose when I was landing. I mean, the, the winds were picking up. Let him go. I, I got to get out of here. You know? <laughs> uh, I got home without a problem, but a great tailwind coming home. Um, but for any of the pilots that I've talked to that I've tried to, to share, you know, the, this experience and recruit them into it is really clear and consistent communication with the patient ahead of time of what to expect, what the options are, and then just keep them informed when you're in flight. Um, Sometimes they can just sleep the whole way because everything's fine, but do what you can, but don't take risks. Right. That's for anybody listening. We don't take risks. Yeah. No, 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 we, we, we really don't. And and that's hopefully all pilots subscribe to that, that mantra. Um, but you know, when you've got the burden of a passenger, especially a passenger that already has a lot of other things going on in their life and it's not family and, you know, all kind of stuff while they understand the risks and they sign the waiver, uh, the burden's on us to make sure that that risk is fully, um, analyzed and, and compensated for. And so I've canceled plenty of flights and I know that's probably a burden on them, but there's no reason to take risks and that so far has worked out pretty well. So. Good. Yeah, we never want to put any extra pressure on somebody to just do a flight to do the flight. We always want to make sure that it's always the safest option. Do you do any public benefit flying with other organizations? Lifeline Pilots and uh, Angel Flight Central, I'm also kind of in those circles. And I know you guys coordinate uh, a lot yeah, of that. quite a anyway, bit. But it just also helps to get some visibility on, on other things, especially if I'm traveling for work. I might be pretty far away from East. And so be able to see what's going on because it's kind of nice sometimes if like I have to go somewhere for work anyway which isn't that often lately but that hey I could pick up a passenger on the way there or the way back we've done that a couple times and that's it's great yeah those organizations are good and then also Young Eagles um, has been another organization uh, getting kids their first flight uh, to expose them to, to aviation which 
you know, maybe a good or bad thing. I took my daughter's boyfriend on her first flight. Now he wants to be a pilot. Um, oh no, he got the bug. <laughs> yeah, he's got the bug. And, and I, I don't know how my daughter feels like me having a relationship with her boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> look, I'm just going to help you. Help you yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been, been fun. What so, made you want to become a pilot? Well, I'd always been like interested in aviation. Uh, always, you know, went to the air shows as a kid and looked at airplanes and weirdly always was reading accident reports. Like I, there's TV show now, TV shows now and YouTube channels that, like going to the accidents. But I remember even back like in the 80s and 90s uh, getting a hold of the FAA and, and TSB reports like in the library, even just curious because at, at my day job, part of my day job is engineering. And so I'm always curious of that technical like, how did this happen, right? You know, again, like 15 years ago or so, uh, a friend of mine happened to be a pilot. Uh, and I was like, man, I, I would love to fly. And he goes, well, why the heck haven't you? I said, well, I don't have the time or the money. And he said, well, you're never going to have the time or money. So either do it now or never do it, right? Make up your mind. And uh, my my wife happened to be in that discussion. And so she bought me a discovery flight uh, for my birthday without me knowing, which I'm sure she regrets now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so and I went and I got the bug and, uh, it's been, been, uh, a lot of fun. What is your real job? Well, that's one of those interesting kind of weird turns of, of fate. So at the time that that was happening and I, I learned to fly, I was in the communications industry working with uh, cable television and, uh, some of the video technologies. And then I'm not going to go through my whole work experience, but I ended up at my current company, which is Spirant and I'm an entrepreneur and I got involved with, uh, with their uh, GPS technologies because I had this piloting background. So I it, I wouldn't be in my current job had I not kind of taken a chance to just go follow my curiosity and passion to learn how to fly. And so now um, I work um, as my day job. I run a part of their business that's focused on GPS technologies that go into self-driving cars, drones, oh, airplanes, wow. military aircraft, all sorts of different things even your smartphone and mm. work now a lot directly with the FAA on their emerging technologies to enable drones and air taxis. And so, yeah, it all kind of worked out in a weird way that I ended up yeah. you know, doing it for fun, but actually impacted my career. And I, I will say, you know, most pilots say about the FAA is that that they're not happy until you're unhappy. I was um, going to say, actually, what's it like working with the FAA on a daily basis? Yeah, I'm Every sure pilot's that, nightmare. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, certainly the organization is different than the people. And and I, I do think the organization and the people don't strive to make our lives difficult as pilots. Um, they just are very safety minded. And certainly there are things that they could do better. And I remind them of that when we're working together to try and get something done that seems to have taken a lot longer than it should have. But their their heads and minds are in the right right place. And they they exist to expand aviation across the United States and the world and do it in a safe way. And so like we're trying to make make it possible to have commercial drone delivery flights, like, you know, the ability to deliver medical goods to hospitals using a drone or packages to your home, things like that, um, or infrastructure inspection, a lot of different use cases. But um, they want to see it happen. But, you know you start peeling back the onion of, of how do you do that and make sure that it's safe. There's a thousand things that have to be considered. And until all 1000 things are considered and dealt with and proven to be reliable and safe, they're not going to allow it. Now that's different than like the barnstormer days of aviation, you know, a hundred years ago, but it is where we are today. And that's uh, sometimes frustrating to work with FA because of that safety minded culture, but I can't fault them for, for having it. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting time. And anytime I feel like somebody's like, oh, the FAA is on the phone. I'm like, oh, why? Who do they want? So I'm really happy to hear that they are involved and nicely involved. <laughs> so now uh, if you could say anything about being a volunteer pilot, what would it be? I think one of the hardest things is just finding time. Uh, but I would say that uh, much like we've discussed, the opportunity to share the unique talent and resources that we have as pilots with uh, people in need or just even people that like we Young Eagles, the others program that just want to experience aviation, take a flight for the first time. Sharing that gift with them it, it is just priceless. Uh, and so uh, it's not as hard as it seems in the sense that 
you know, carrying these passengers, you think, oh, you know, are they going to be okay in a small airplane? Are they going to be able to be okay with all these challenges that, that we might come up with? And the reality is they're very much happy to, to get in a small airplane and, and get where they need to go because the alternatives are expensive and in many cases very difficult. You know, if they live in a small community, especially being able to be picked up in a rural area and go directly where they got to go is saving them a ton of time and and, and sometimes literal pain uh, yeah. that they would experience in having to travel long distances. If that's what motivates you to volunteer, there's a hundred other reasons, but uh, it's absolutely something everybody should consider. Where would you say your favorite place is to fly to? Well, it's not a volunteering place. So so there's probably like two answers. So like every pilot would say Oshkosh for Air Venture, um, which, you know, go every year and uh, and camp out with about 20 other people and flying as a gaggle. It's the, this great thing um, called Pirates of the North 40. But the uh, the other place <laughs> I love that. is uh, is Air Zoo. So Kalamazoo, Michigan, which is about an hour and 15 minute flight from uh, Columbus, Indiana, where we're at, is an aviation museum in Kalamazoo and it's, it's on the airport property. So you can literally land taxi up to the, to the, to the uh, museum and tie down and go in. And uh, that particular hangar is a restoration hangar. So you get to see all the stuff mm. that they're restoring. And yeah. there's actually part of a mercury redstone rocket on the ramp, right. You know, it, that you can literally go up and touch. And then a short walk from that um, uh, hangar to the main ex- exhibition hall uh, they've got an SR-71 Blackbird. They've got oh, wow. Tomcats. They've got a bunch of space stuff and World War II stuff. And so it's this hidden gem. It's like almost as good as Air and Space or the um, Air Force Museum in Dayton. It's just this great hidden gem. And, you know, it's an hour flight. Everybody from kids to adults enjoys it. they got a cafe for lunch. It's like just your perfect uh, $100 hamburger on Um I love going up there. I'm going to have to tell Wings Field to step it up. We don't even have a restaurant here or a museum. I mean, we have a country club that we're not a part of. That's not as cool. <laughs> I'm just saying for what we got, but yeah. that's awesome though. And so now I feel like we pretty much touched on this about really focusing on volunteerism and that being a passion of yours. But what is one thing that you want to leave our listeners with? I would say that volunteering is quite rewarding. We all want to fly anyway. We want to go to Air Zoo. We want to go get that $100 hamburger or whatever. We're always looking for excuses to go fly. And we should to keep our skills sharp, but also to to share with others. And so go do it. You don't have to be a medical expert. You don't have to be a social worker. You don't have to, you know, all the things that you might think about would need to be for a medical flight. Most people just you know, they're they're getting long-term treatment for cancer or uh, caring for somebody along those lines. And they just, they need a, an efficient way to get from point A to point B. And almost every one of them is just overjoyed to have you do that. There are very few reasons why you shouldn't do it, right? You should just, you know, find the time and, and, and go start enjoying it. And even if it's one flight a year, that's one more person that, uh, gets from point A to point B and doesn't have to uh, spend a ton of money and time to do it. And you get to enjoy the time with them. So, you know, get involved, go do it. You know, you'll meet lots of really interesting people along the way. Uh, So it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jeremy. We really appreciate your time. We appreciate the time that you put into this podcast and the time that you put into the air, helping all of our patients get where they need to go. All right. Thanks, Jessica and Madeline. It's great to talk to you. Yeah, it was great to meet you. I always say Maddie and I are on the outreach side, so we don't get to interact with the patients and pilots as much. So Mm -hmm. hearing all these stories, it's just incredible. And we appreciate everything you do for us. Well, you have to edit out the parts where I get a little choked up, but oh. you know, no, uh, no way. We're keeping part. those in. Yeah. That's the personality. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, some of these flights are just something else, but they, they leave a, an impact on you. And that's yeah, for sure. But well, you all have a good afternoon. Thank you so much. Talking. Enjoy you the too. FAA today. <laughs> <All right>. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Oh man. I forgot about that flight where, uh, George got dropped off somewhere else. And it was just kind of like, it's okay. I got people. Wait, so how did he get all the way home? I think his daughter-in-law came and picked him up because I think it was only like three hours or something. Or I think the family members like drove him halfway. I don't know. I try to block out that part of my life. George is so cute. I kept getting an echo in the very beginning. So that's why my speech was not correct. She's just saying that. I was going to say, I don't know how to use words most oftentimes of the day. And it's kind of late in my day, you know.
I'm very productive between nine and noon. It's almost one o'clock. It's getting to my Alani new time. Yeah. And I can already uh, vouch for her, guys. She did not have a seltzer. And I mean, the good kinds of seltzers. She had a seltzer water. That's about it. I wish it was a Sunny D seltzer. I was waiting for somebody to respond. And then I remembered we're just talking to each other. (laughs) See, it's been a day already and it's only Tuesday. (laughs) Oh, sugar plums. I was going to tell him that he should fly into Family Fest, but then I was like, South Pennsylvania is kind of far from Indiana. Yeah, I didn't know he was based in Indiana. For some reason, I thought it was Virginia. No, I knew it was like West, but I just didn't know where. I forget these things. Like I said, I try to block out that part of my brain. Wasn't being the flight coordinator fun? No. I miss when you were the flight coordinator because then all the pilots were my friends too. I was just like, hello, here I am. (laughs) That's you have you to just showed up. Too. <laughs> Craig, you have to take me on your boat too. For those who don't know, I don't know if I actually talked about this ever um, in our trailer or not, but I was originally hired as our flight coordinator back in 2018 when I was a ripe college graduate. You're old. Thank you. You're, You're not ripe anymore. Still. No, I'm like, I'm at that point of the avocado's life stage where it just browns. Oh, I'm the brown say, avocado. I was going to say you're like the bananas I always buy, but never eat. And then they just get brown on my counter. Um, I will take that because that banana is great for banana bread. So I'm a butterfly. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> so I was originally hired as our flight coordinator um, and I was our flight coordinator through COVID. And I mm. have she's PTSD. a great math magician. My uh, track to math teacher, I hope she's listening to this and can hear you say that because she probably just had a good chuckle to herself. That's true. I will say in all those COVID flights, we only had one hiccup and it was fixed pretty quickly. Remember the pilots showed up to the airport and the face shields weren't there. It was like 7 a.m. too. And I was like, uh oh, yeah, communication are bad, but it worked. I like to not think about that. It was fun. We got free vodka. I still haven't drank it. I look at it as a trophy at this point. Shout out to Kiki Vodka. Uh, They turned vodka into hand sanitizers and then gave us bottles of vodka. I know. I can't drink it. It's like a trophy. Exactly. Maybe I will drink it and then I'll turn the the bottle itself, though, into a trophy. No, that's not the same. It's sacrilegious, I feel like. It is. It's like when you like, it's something like haunted, I feel like. Like if I do something to that bottle, we're going to end up with COVID again. Did you ever hear of moon water? No, what's that? I heard. (laughs) How did we get from sacrilegious vodka to moon water? (laughs) If anyone is listening and knows about moon water, I haven't tried it yet, but I heard about it. And if it's, if you leave a bottle of water outside during the night, the moon shines in it. And if you like make wishes and stuff and then drink the water. The wishes will come true. You know what I did this weekend, okay? <laughs> oh, that's a laugh I needed today. <laughs> I, you know, somebody's going to call me and ask where I heard about moon water. <laughs> and if anybody wants it, I'll make it for you. <laughs> Just make your own wishes. She doesn't have those. <laughs> if that doesn't explain my weekend, I don't think anything will. Oh, cheese and rice. I love it. We really appreciate you listening to Takeoff Talk today. Yeah. P.S. We even gave you guys a nickname. So if you keep uh, coming back, we are now referring to you as our frequent flyers. So shout out to you, frequent flyers. There's no benefit quite like listening to the two of us ramble. Um, There are no mileage options and you don't get discounts for showing up. But you do get moon water. I was going to say our appreciation, but Jess can still make you the moon water. Just let us know your wishes. (laughs) Thank you so much. And we will talk to you next week. Have a great day. That's it for today's episode of Takeoff Talk with Angel Flight East. If you want to learn more about our services, please visit our website at www.angelflighteast.org or call our office at 215-358-1900. Join us in our mission. If you're a healthcare worker or a patient in need of air travel and flight services, AFE is here for you. Subscribe to the show so you can hear more stories. Join us again next week right here on Takeoff Talk.